Hey everybody, this is Anne Moline with Women's Wellness Collaborative. Um, I am reaching out to you here today from the middle of Vermont and it is April and we have, as you can probably see out my window, we've had some nice freezing rain and sleet and it's kind of disgusting. And so I've been thinking a lot about how to kind of balance my own circadian rhythms and neurotransmitters and hormones and that kind of thing um, in a way to support me as I anxiously await spring here. So I figured with that in mind that today I would give you a little primer on a lab that I run with a lot of the clients who we work with, um, which is called the Dutch test, which assesses for a variety of different hormones and um, neurotransmitter markers and detoxification markers. Um, so we'll jump in and take a few minutes to talk about that. Okay, so what is the Dutch test? So Dutch stands for Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones. This is a lab that was created by a company called Precision Analytical. Um, and their website, as you can see there, is dutchtest.com. And they have a lot of great resources on their website if you want to go check them out and uh, learn a little bit more about that. Um, a few things just to know about what this lab offers and why I like to um, look at it with a lot of the clients who we work with. So. Um, one of them is, it, is that it looks at adrenal hormones and um, so primarily that you, we think about cortisol stress hormones, right, when we think about adrenal hormones. Um, and cortisol is the primary stress hormone and one of the nice things about the Dutch test is that it evaluates not only the 24-hour free cortisol, which you might get in a saliva test that are, you know, commonly run and which are great tests out there, um, but you also get a look at metabolized cortisol and the relationship of metabolized cortisol to free cortisol. Um, so metabolized cortisol is a better reflection of overall cortisol production, which can sometimes look quite different from what free cortisol looks like. So it gives us some insight um, a little bit deeper than what you might get on some other labs. Um, Another thing that we look at with the Dutch test is DHEA, which is another hormone that's primarily made in the adrenal glands. Um, and DHEA is also an indicator of kind of how well you're responding to stress and how resilient you may be to, to stress. Um, so it's a good way to see kind of how well you're countering, responding, and able to manage the stress that you have. You know, and one of the things with a lot of the women who we work with, um, they're under pretty significant amounts of stress, and usually that's on multiple domains. I think that um, we often think about stress as being something that is simply like a lifestyle kind of thing, but oftentimes there are many other stresses that we are up against, which can include, you know, toxins in our environment or food sensitivities or chronic infections, right? So there are all these other ways in which our bodies are sort of trying to deal with stress um, that might not be so apparent on the surface. Um, so this gives us some good insight into where some of those things may be. Um, in addition to looking at adrenal hormones, this lab also uh, looks at sex hormones. So all of the estrogens and metabolites of estrogens, um, and also at how well the body is detoxifying estrogen, including how well you're methylating estrogens in phase two detoxification. So that's kind of a critical thing. A lot of people are um, a little bit hip on methylation and some of the impacts that that can have on overall body processes. And so this doesn't tell us exactly how all of the methylation processes in the body are working, but it can give us a glimpse and some insight into how that might be working and specifically how it is working for, um, in the case of estrogens. Um, so we also get a look at progesterone. Typically for premenopausal women, we're looking to run this lab around day 19 of the menstrual cycle so that we can see if there is an appropriate surge in progesterone during the luteal phase there. Um, we can also see testosterone levels and, um, and then melatonin, which is also a hormone but is not um, a sex hormone specifically or an adrenal hormone, but melatonin and cortisol should run kind of counter to one another in the circadian rhythm. So cortisol should start out high in the morning and should gradually decline throughout the day and be at its lowest at night. And melatonin should do the opposite, right? So it's kind of known as our sleep hormone. Um, Another reason why it's nice to see melatonin is that it can give us some insight into gut health. So quite commonly what we're seeing with our clients is this triangular overlapping of 
issues with hormones, issues with detoxification, and issues with gut health. So it's a nice way to kind of get um, a broad view into some of these other areas that we might want to look at more specifically. Um, additionally, uh, some things that this test has to offer that are somewhat new or special to this lab and that are you definitely can't do if you're doing a saliva test um, is one of the great things about using urine for this is that they're now providing some indicators of or organic acid indicators that can give you insight into your B12 and B6 status, so a little bit about your nutrient status, um, glutathione status. So glutathione status could be a great indicator of your body's detoxification load and or capacity. Um, and then it's also looking at some neurotransmitter indicators. So norepinephrine, epinephrine, serotonin, these things are great. If, you know, not only are people dealing with stress, are people dealing with hormone imbalances, detoxification, gut health issues, right? But also oftentimes mood irregularities, um, poor mood, fluctuating mood, whatever. So it's, a, it's just another great way to get a window into that. And then on top of that, there's yet another marker for oxidative stress, which sort of tells us the burden on the body in any number of different ways, just kind of how well the body is handling um, the load that's on it. Um, a lot of things can promote oxidation, so it's not specific in terms of what it's looking at, but it can kind of tell us how well the cells are functioning um, and if there are kind of irregularities in that. So overall, this gives us a lot of great information to work with and a lot of great ways to start um, putting together a customized protocol to help you achieve your optimal well-being.